Currently, we have studied mostly all the features of the Jira. What are issues? How issues are seen? Leaving the administrative part of the Jira, we have seen as a user what you can do with the Jira. This section is dedicated to real working of the Jira. That wall we have studied, mainly the flow, we will be starting creating a project and we'll be going end to end how the project goes, that how the project is started, how the issues are created, how the sprints are created, how the issues are closed and sprint is closed and the reports are generated. So we'll be covering this end to end scenario so that you get a real experience of a project. We'll be considering that we need to develop the home page and the support page of the website. Let's create. So we need to first create a project. So I will do create project. I will be doing a building a scrum project. So click on next. So the name would be website helping testers dot com and that's all key is fine and that's all click on submit and a project is created so if you go here and uh, you will see this project is created let's uh, go to the board because as the project is created its board is automatically created let's go to its agile board now the first thing after the project is made product owner will identify the use cases that is the stories we want to build the task which needs to be done so click the backlog mode now what we need to do we need to identify the stories task and those issues let's write a story as a user he can view courses so that he can and view them okay just click on enter so a story has been created next story as a user he can view the contact details so he can call customer care if required and similarly the dummy story so just give it as story number one story number two story number we are just adding because I just don't want to waste your time in just creating more and more stories and story number four also we will create some tasks so instead of story let's say create some tasks that integrate contact page contact page to home screen it's the jummy task okay similarly I will create more tasks task number one task number two task number three task number four we won't be creating bug because what is a bug when a tester will be doing testing of the development build he will find the issues and then only bugs are added into the system so for now there are no bugs okay this is our backlog now what we will do product owner 
will sit with the whole team and they will product owner will go through with each and every issue okay so he'll be going with each and every issue with the whole team one more thing like we have created the stories from directly uh, backlogs from here you can also use this option for creating of the story let's say story instead of store sorry instead of story number five six and you can just create it from here okay so this is how you can add backlogs to your current project so in the next section we will be studying how we can start a sprint thank you so once the backlog is created the project manager knows what the task needs to be done what he will do he will arrange a project meeting he will call all the developers testers and they will be sitting together all the team lead and they will be estimation each and every story and task that how much time it would be taking so let's say if you open any task it's a story you will find a time estimation field just a second time estimation no it's not coming okay the reason is because our project is not configured for showing the times the later we were using the sample project so it may be configured but not let's go you must be having the admin credentials for it go to configure fields and let's do where is my field so i want to have this field time tracking let the jira decide why it is not showing so it's so saying three needs to be done two are fulfilled and uh, we need to add it okay so just go to that link and uh, scroll down yes the reason is that because our screen is not configured to show this field so because no time tracking is mentioned so do time tracking here okay and let's do create now yeah i want to create a story and if i scroll down yes it's giving me time to estimate my task okay so it's done okay so yeah so now what i was saying is that team will sit together and they will decide that how much time it would be taking it so let's say they will sit down and will estimate okay this time so it would be taking let's say four hours okay so this would be taking uh, 12 hours agile process that any task should not be greater than two days or i would say rather each task should not be greater than one day but there are tasks which if they are greater than those days then better make it into sub task divide it but don't make it very large uh, let's say i mention it and see time is coming here so you can enter four you can give two just a second some time it would be taking it because we want to have a realistic project yeah the sample we have taken before was a realistic but when you work from end to end it will give a more detailed view how the process goes okay so we have added the number of hours for each story now uh, we have identified it now what product manager will do he will divide or into various version and epics now what are epics as we have told that epics is a main subset for example in this project what we are doing we are developing a let's say a page for home screen and a contact screen so there are two epics it is not necessary that each epic should close in one uh, sprint epics goes um, uh, in multiple sprints so you can create an epic from here let's say one epic should be home 
functionality pick okay and another would be contact us and summary would be uh, epic and I create now I can assign these issues to the respective stories also. Okay, I say it is of epic one, epic one, epic two, epic two, epic one. So you can assign a diet here also, or you can click it and under the epic section here, you can assign it from here as well. Let's say contact us. When I click on yes, it will be shown here. So it's any way you can do. We can make versions of it, like when a version will be delivered to the client and those. So we can create versions. I can say version 1.0 and let me create a new version let's say version 1.1 or let's say 2 2.0 you can assign versions also so this is version 1 version 1 version 1 version 1 okay and similarly, you can add version here also. Let's say it's already added for it. Let me mention the version that when this issue will be fixed in this in which version. So let's say one. Okay. So and some task in version two. okay so now we have epics we have versions and we have assigned all our issues epics and versions we have estimated that how much time will each issue will take to be completed we are all set with starting of a sprint so we have seen that how we have created the backlogs epics and versions also in this project we need to invite the developers and tester currently this project is only built by me so I have only the access so I need to invite developers testers and assign these issues to them just a second so here the assignee section it is all is missing that is these issues are currently unassigned right so leave that part we don't uh, going in that detail but just let you know that this is also a section in which they are invited and these tickets are assigned to the respective team members. Okay. So let's start a sprint. We will click on a create sprint and what we want. This is a sprint. Print a sprint by dragging the issues here. Okay. So from the backlog we have to identify the issues we will be fixing in sprint win so you can just do drag and drop or you can just create an issue here uh, issue 10 let's say okay how you are doing drag and drop you have to estimate what I mean that we have identified the hours here how much time it does it take so depending upon my developers or testers availability I have the move the task from backlog to sprint one for the time I think this task would be completed in this sprint time plus the severity and priority of task which would be needs to be closed first or which functionality we first need to deliver to the client. So let's say this is the functionality we will be delivering to the client in sprint one. So we are all set and let's start the sprint. It's of two week sprint, which is the best time for sprint to start. We will be starting sprint from now. So this sprint has 10 working days because we have set Monday and 
sorry saturday and sunday as a holiday in our sprint details and if there are more working days you can just add it from here and you can click on start i have clicked on start and as you can see the board has changed it has gone to the active sprint before we were on backlog now as the sprint has started it has gone to the active sprint and all the issues which we have assigned in this sprint are in to do state let's change some settings you can change some board settings from here story points let's say swim lanes i want to identify epics okay and some filters and those we have already set so you can set the settings for, for now let us make them as default okay as you can see here details it is showing us the time 10 days are remaining and once the sprint is completed you can mark it as completed and issues to me and all those stuff that's uh, how we start a sprint so our sprint is created and our developers have started working on it so what a developer would do he will open this ticket let's say Currently, all tickets are unassigned, but uh, considering that a developer has opened his account and he's working on ticket. So currently is in to do state. Uh, let me assign it to me only. Web of Gupta. When I start working on it, I will do in progress. In real projects, there can be more flows. The flows can be currently we are studying with three flows to do, in progress, and done. But in real projects, there can be more flows like to do, in progress. And after in progress, they will mark as dev complete. Dev complete means that developer has finished his task. Now QA can start. Now quality assurance person can change the status as testing in progress. If the issue is resolved, he will mark it as done, that is this done, or he, she can make it reopen and it will again go into to-do state. So this is the real process, but for the sake of teaching and to avoid unnecessary columns so that it is easily understandable, we have just scheduled it to three. So what we will saying is that in to-do, there is an issue in progress, the developer is fixing it once the issue has been marked done tester will verify it and if the issue is not resolved he will mark as to do again okay so this is the process which we are following developer again starts working on it and it is in progress state you can just drag and drop from here also so similarly here here so this was a ticket in which a tester was working and he identified a defect so tester will do create a defect and he will say let's say bug it is bug and this all sections and you can give assign it to sprint one logically you would be filling all these when you are working in real project description what is the priority labels environment in which you found attachment linked issue so whatever is the fields the jira administrator and your manager has configured you would be filling those as we have anyhow gone through these so it's a wastage of time and i'm not telling you that uh, give assign it to me uh, what would the epic so it's uh, self explanatory and create and if you go to the da dashboard you will find a bug here so you see this is the bug so when the developer would fix and it will go here okay so this is how the process go during the sprint and if you collapse the swim lanes you can find the epics we have two that we have the swim lanes of epic that is home functionality contact us and the third type of epic would be which are not assigned right and expand our swim lanes 
one more thing a very interesting thing suppose uh, during in the course of the sprint i want to do some more task into this sprint so let me do let me create one more story here let do add a new story in the current sprint which is being going on so let me make the sprint 1 as soon as i enter the sprint 1 you will see here a error message a warning is coming that sprint scope will be affected by the section what it means is that during the start of the sprint you have identified that this much section would be covered in this sprint but now you are adding more task into the sprint so that is the reason there can be a delay in the sprint that in this time all those tasks would not able to be completed because you are adding more task so just hit on create let's go again on manage boards go to the active sprints and let's close some sprints okay okay and okay leave this as it is so this is how the real working of uh, goes there are changes of the status testing done bugs are logged and sometimes new issues are also added into the sprint then we have seen that how the execution goes in, during the sprint a uh, scrum sprint so let's see considering let's say our 10 days are over and we are completing the sprint it is saying it is giving a warning that five issues that total there were nine issues of those five issues you have completed but four are not completed so if you are moving if you are completing this sprint what it will do it will move all these four tasks back to backlog so let's say i agree to it and do it complete now it has generated me a chart what the chart says that these were the issues which were completed during the sprint these issues were not completed you can go to issue navigator it gives me an asterisk the issues which were added once the sprint was created so as you can remember we added this task when it was the sprint has already been started and this task we have added two tasks you can see the chart the chart does not looks good the reason is that um, we created the sprint and closed the same day so that's the reason the chart is not self explanatory otherwise it has been gone like this it's a sprint chart anyhow we have a section after this i will add a section in which we can check how the reports and charts are generated so you have an idea how it goes so let's see if we have an option we can delete this sprint we can reopen this sprint if if it if uh, we are extending the time of sprint or some other task needs to be done but uh, hardly these uh, options are don't to be touched they are never been touched so just forget about them so that's all how we can close this sprint we can check the reports if we go to release you can check that version 2 uh, in version 2 there were two issues in to do state and in version 1 four are done one in progress and is five and two let's say i want to release this version in that state only so i will make a release of this version and move issues the issues which are not fixed make it into release to version 1 is completed and it has been released to the client in the release i will see the version 1 we will be talking about the reports generated after the end of the sprints and all what type of reports you can view during the sprint the project we created we won't be using that that helping testers project the reason is that it has very dummy data so let's take the sample project or the scrum sample project 
and go to the report section. Oh, sorry, uh, yeah, report section. So there are a lot of type of reports, chart, variable. You can go through them. So let us discuss four to five the charts which are commonly used. So the first chart is the burn down chart. It is the widely used chart. This chart is seen during the execution of the sprint. It is needed to track our activities. It says that how many amount of the work we have estimated in a sprint and how the time is going and the task is decreasing. So ideally this should go like this that during the when the time is increases of the sprint the duration of the sprint is increasing your task should decrease. But uh, actual shows the green line how it is going and how it is increased. You can see a increase here. Now you can see that how it can increase. The reason may be that during the course of the sprint we added new tasks. So that's the reason it is showing the upside mark. Another type of sprint is let's say velocity chart. A chart which generally seen by the managers to identify that how much task our team can do in each sprint. Like it is for this one sprint. So similarly if you had other sprints it's you, it, uh, it would have been similar type of bars. So this gray line shows that how much task amount of hours work we estimated in sprint and how much we were able to do. Let's say in let's say three four consecutive sprints we can see that we are able to complete only 10 story points or hours in a sprint. So um, managers came to know that there is no use for estimating this much task. Estimate the task which can be done or the time required is for 10 hours only. So this is the how the team can be managed, the sprints can be managed. Other chart, the pie chart report we already studied that we had a filter and create the how many issues are there or not. So version report it will give it will track it will be able to track you the versions of your project it like similarly the epic how much task of epic have been completed how much task of a version has been completed so these are similar charts that this was the total task and how you are working it so as according to your needs you can use the chart but majorly two type of charts are used burn down charts velocity charts and this pie chart diagram depending upon the filter you add it is mostly used by testers and managers to track that what are the status of bugs and how many issues are closed or not during a sprint and those type of stuff